Oh, look, someone's drawn a willy on the side of my van. Dave Spence, you're in deep trouble, young man. Oh, guys, thanks for coming along to watch this video. Firstly, before we begin, look how cool this table is. Let me just flop this down. This table, I love, I've had it for years. As you can see, I've drawn weights on it and stuff like that. When I was spraying my weights in the gym. Just look these two in here, these two lugs. Bang, got yourself a table to work on. Absolutely brilliant. What we're, going to get that, what we're going to be looking at today is central heating pumps. We're going to talk about how actual electric motors work, how pumps actually pump water, because it's one thing just saying that's where we put the pump on the system. It's another thing knowing why does it work? Why is that pumping? And once we've got that knowledge, we'll also be able to fault find on pumps as well if you ever get called out to a problem. You are going to go and follow us over on Instagram if you've got the slightest bit of love for me. All right because it's been sad, I've been lonely on my own. I went away with the missus, I did a lovely vlog about it on my Times With James YouTube channel, so check that out as well. I'll leave links to all these bits below and at the end of the video, so you can check them out. Anyway, before we continue, let me introduce you to the pump that we're gonna be butchering to demonstrate how these work. Lovely little Velo pump, you'll have seen loads of these. These are absolutely amazing beasts, they're very, very quiet and we're going to be talking about how pumps that they used to be really noisy but now they're really really quiet we're also going to be talking about the different types of heads you can get the head pressures so we've got three different types of head pressure pumps here today and that's what we're going to be talking about so guys i hope you enjoy the video i hope you subscribe follow us on instagram facebook snapchat and twitter and i'll see you in the video Ooh, hold tight Right then guys, so let me just get this beast here. Hope you can see that okay. Hope there's no reflections in that. We're not gonna bore you with loads of theory, but it's gonna be helpful for you guys to know how this all works. So firstly, let's just whip this beast off here, and we're just gonna talk about how we indicate what a pump looks like on a schematic drawing. Very, very simple. They're always a circle with an arrow, or they were in my day. The arrow, if you've got the pipe going through here like that, and then coming out the bottom, denotes exactly which way the flow is going. So in this case, the flow of water is coming up here, it's being sucked in through here and then pushed out through here like so. So that's the first thing. We've covered the simples, all right? So we're just gonna talk about where these are in a system. Um, usually you'll find if you've got something like an S-Plan heating system, which is really, really common in the UK, you'll have something like the pump on here, then you'll come to a T and then you have two motorized valves, just like that, okay? And they will go off to your heating and your hot water or whatever zones you have, that's an S-Plan. The only difference between an S-Plan and a Y-Plan system is very, very simple. You just change the position of the valves from having two valves to having one valve in the middle that diverts water to your hot water or your heating so your hot water and your heating, and that is simply it. So if we actually have a look at a pump itself, they're pretty simple things. Um, but they were simple, and they are still simple now. Back in the day, they used to have like one speed. So on the velos like this, you've got something really simple. You've got nine different speed settings on here now. So like I said, they used to be really simple. Um, you had one setting, but that was just one setting for a million different types of heating system, of different radiators and things like that. So what we had now is we've got, in particular, the Velo one. It's a very, very good pump because they go across a whole different range of installations and systems. So we've got the first three settings, the second three, and the third three, so we'll do the first three. So you've got modulating. Modulating, right, is when your pump, right, is sat here. You've got, say, three radiators. They've all got a TRV on them, here, here, and here. And as this room gets a bit warmer and the TRV there starts to shut down, the pump will notice the slight resistance on its output. It will see an up in resistance here. So we've got these all joined up there like so. That will go, oh, the resistance just, just popped up a little bit. I'm gonna slow down a bit because I know that we don't need so much flow because one of those radiators is shut. So that's what modulating does. And um, you've got three different settings for modulating. Uh, if you've got like loads of radiators, not so many radiators, and guess what? Even less, it's that simple. Um, do you like my pink glasses, by the way? I like them very much. I tell you what, it's really warm in the studio today. I'm getting really sweaty. I'm getting sweaty just thinking about pumping and pumps. Yes. Uh, anyway, right, we've got what I call fixed, 
This is for systems that really don't have, they're not, they haven't been power flushed, they're pretty dirty systems. It's really the sort of setting that you really don't want to use that much because it means the system's not great and you've got one, two and three settings within the fixed zone and they equate to like a fixed speed, there's no modulation, they will just say one, two and three, which is what I'm going to call the old school way of doing it. Um, so you've got fixed, and then you've got the last one, which I call underfloor modulating. So underfloor systems tend to have a lot higher flow rates going out. You know, sometimes you've got a big manifold of say, you know, 10 inlets and outlets, and therefore you don't want the modulation to be mental because there's only gonna be very small differences in outlet pressure on the pump. It's gonna see smaller amounts of difference in pressure and then alter its speed in a smaller way than what it would do for the first modulating when you've only just got radiators. So that is literally the difference. So what we're trying to say is pumps have got more modern and you know that's the way it is nowadays. So just get your head around it because that's what's going to be going out there. So let's have a quick look now at how pumps actually pump. We'll have a look on here and then we're going to whip one apart so you can actually see what I'm on about as well. Then we'll have a look at the last bit and for me the kind of complicated side of things is why is the pump spinning round? It's all well and good saying the pump spins round, the water flies off here and there. Well why? I mean let's figure out why because if we know that uh, it helps us have a better idea as to why there are problems and what can go wrong with pumps sometimes. We want to get water from A to B, all right? Simple, isn't it? Seems real simple, and it is. What pumps do is they move the water from A to B. If you imagine, if you've got a skipping rope or you've got a small rope and you start spinning it round, the outside part of that rope is going round and round and round like that. It's the same if you get a hose pipe full of water and you start spinning that hose pipe around, water is gonna fly outwards out of the end of the hose pipe. So what we do is we introduce water to the center of our impeller, okay? To the center of the pump. Once we've introduced that to a spinning impeller, say our impeller's spinning this way, okay, and we've got our fins coming off like that, our water is just flying outwards in all directions. Now what a central heating pump or a water pump does is enhance that flying out direction into one place. So we have our water, let's just say we've, this is our pump body here. So we have an exit and the exit is usually to one side, like so, and that goes off like that. So our water goes into the back of the pump, is introduced here, is sprayed outwards, and then forced, effectively channeled into our outlet like that, and then off to wherever the services are and what we want to feed. That is literally how it happens. How about we have a very quick look inside one of these Velo pumps and you can see exactly what I'm on about in real terms. Guys, if you lot are at college at the moment, speak to your tutors, see if they can get you an old central heating pump. It's a really, really good idea to take stuff apart. It gives you a great idea of how things work, why they work, how they can go wrong and what bits you need to look out for when they do go wrong, because stuff does go wrong. That's just how it is. Right, so, I mean, just for safety's sake, what you usually get with one of these pumps, you've got your electrical connection, uh, a little wee book about how much your pump loves you and how much it wants to be with you, how much it wants to have inhibitor run through it, but the rest of it's wee little life. And also, one thing I really love, they give you pump valve rubbers. Now, if you don't need to use these, don't throw them away, guys. Pop them in your tool bag. They are worth their weight in gold sometimes. Six o'clock on a Friday evening when you get a call out and that pump's leaking a little bit on the old valves, some of these in the bag can come in real handy with a file and a bit of emery cloth, believe me. So, let's get this beast up here. Let's open up the baggy boo. Ooh, not that side. Very, very simple. If you ever do have to do a head change, obviously turn your water off each side of the pump. And then often all you've got to do is undo four Allen keys. Ooh, undo you, oh yes. But really you should never ever have to do this. Pumps these days don't tend to fail as much as they used to. The failure of a pump is not usually much to do with the pump itself. It's usually to do with the condition of the water that the pump is actually pumping. That's the thing, it's just one of those things. It's one of those things, baby. You gotta put good water through your pump. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so <laughs> what we get is, so look, let's pop this apart. Oh, there we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezage. So you may see here that we've got two major parts of the body. Our impeller here, if we just pull this out actually, we can just pull this off. This piece here that spins round sits directly on that housing in there like so. We've got a small rubber gasket that goes round under there that when we tighten up our four Allen keys that creates a watertight seal and that means then that everything underneath this 
metal piece here doesn't get onto the electrics. We do not want that, as we all know mixing electrics with water is a bad idea, guys. If we have a look on here, we've got an arrow here that denotes which way the flow is. Now I'd like you to have a quick look actually at the sort of bum of the body of this pump. As you see here, we've got water that comes in here, here. I can actually stick my finger right up where it comes in and it goes directly to the center and comes out just in here like so. Remember what I said, we're introducing water to the center of the spinning impeller. Once the water is entered into that, it gets caught by our spinning impeller here, goes straight through the hole just there, and then is sprayed outwards all in all different directions. The impeller is spinning around like this, water is being thrown out like that. And therefore, if we look, I don't know if you can see just up here, there's a small hole where all that water's energy, its movement energy is harnessed and pushed up the pipe, up out of the outlet. And that is, actually how the physical movement of spinning the water, entering the center of the pump, spinning it away, and then harnessing it and pushing it up here, that's how pumps work. But the thing is, right, knowing that gives you the power that if you have a problem with the heating system, if you have a problem with the flow rate of a pump or something like that, then you know, hmm, maybe I'm gonna take off that head quickly. Maybe the suppliers are closed and you can't get a new pump. Maybe it's a good idea, you just pop this off. Obviously, turn these two valves off first. Have a look in here, see how clean this is. See how clean these waterways are. Because if they're blocked up, the pump's not gonna work properly. And the same thing goes as well, is sometimes it's a good idea to get a bucket, open up both the valves at each side and just make sure that the valves aren't blocked because pumps create a magnetic field around them. Uh, there, there is a magnet in there, we're gonna talk about that in a sec. And obviously if you've got a heating system that again isn't treated properly, we're gonna have magnetic type particles going around in the water. Steel will get attracted to a magnet and that means sometimes these areas can get built up with magnetite. It's just one of those things, if we wanna get around that, we need to inhibit the heating system properly and also make sure we've got proper filtration. But that's for another video, guys, believe me. Oh, it's so warm in here. I'm burning my bum off telling you about these pumps, everybody. <laughs> A couple of other things to mention when it comes to pumps is the fact that you do get different power outputs of pump. So VLOS range, for example, we've got the 25 1-5. Uh, so that means it pumps a five meter head. So just see that as a standard two story house, or I see it as up to 10 radiators. You get the 1-6 and then you get the 1- Actually, what have we got here? Oh, we've got the 1-8 there. What else have we got? I've got pumps coming out of my ear hole. We've also got the 1-6 here, and then we've got the 1-8. If you wanna know which one you want for your system, or you know, you, you think you need to get one sorted out, we need to kill that fly in a minute, um, is just contact Velo, I'm sure they'll be able to help you out. They are simple things. It's nice for you, and it's good for you to know how they harness the water to go in the direction that you want it to go. I mean, it's not just, if it was just spinning around in the water, it wouldn't really be doing a lot. Um, right, so anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you've learned a little bit more about pumps, a little bit about what they do, a little bit about why you should look into certain things when they've gone wrong and they need fixing. Please follow us on Instagram or do loads of stuff there. We do lots and lots of Instagram stories. You'd have missed out on stuff just like this. Um, and you know, that's just unlucky, isn't it? You've missed out on G getting scrubs. G doesn't come to the studio very much because he doesn't like it. It's not his home, is it? He thinks he's going to the vets when you get that cage out. He ain't a happy G. Sorted, I've got to get all this back in the van. I'll see you next week's video, guys. Remember, there's one thing you've got to do. And that's hold time for the baby. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Am I going to do a song about pumps? We'll see. If we do, it will be coming on right now in the background. You'll hear it coming in. If I haven't, then we're just going to cut to the end credits and all the links to my vlog, other videos, and how to subscribe, and also how to buy this beautiful merchandise right now.